Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. What's up, everyone? Matt here. One of the benefits of being a Patreon supporter of mine is the ability to ask me questions directly. Some of those questions are like burning in the moment, I need to know, and within a couple hours or something, right? So those, those are all taken care of through chat or email or something of that nature. Um, others are not so burning, it's more, you know, like I'd like to know type of things. And I've given everybody a space where they can submit those so that I can answer them in a video, right? Uh, and so this is gonna be the first of an ongoing series of videos where I'm gonna answer those questions. Let's get to it. The first question here comes from Hamlet, and he's asking whether or not to use worksheet formulas or try to do the calculations in AppSheet. Um, so uh, I get this a lot, and usually, uh, like the traditional person that's using AppSheet, like a lot of them are coming from the spreadsheet world. And so, you know, in Google Sheets, you know, you've got spreadsheet formulas all over the place. Maybe you're using conditional formatting and you've got data validation, so you've got drop downs and things. Um, so that's usually where a lot of people are coming from. And then they're taking that and they're adding an AppSheet app to it. Uh, so the, the problem with that sort of setup is really kind of based around the inherent way that AppSheet interacts with, I'm just gonna use a Google Sheet as the example. Um, so like the way, the process that it works, so I've got my device and I'm working on an app and I get, say I've modified five records of the same table, right? And then I hit the sync button. And then, so all five of those are pushed up to the cloud. AppSheet gets them and then they're sending them back one by one to the, uh, to the data source, right? And so, What's really happening there, the actual order of operations is like AppSheet sends the, piece, sends the data to the Google Sheet and then the Google Sheet checks a whole bunch of things. It checks to see, is there any kind of data validation that we need to do? Uh, is it open somewhere? Do we need to do any formatting, uh, conditional formatting things? Uh, are there any scripts that are running? Are there any formulas that are running? And, and so, the app, app sheet waits for all of those things to finish processing. And then Google Sheets sends up a flag saying, okay, we're done. And then app sheet does update number two. <clears throat> so you can see why if you were to have a whole bunch of like conditional formatting uh, on your columns so that when, you know, this, when the order status changes from open to closed, you know, it turns from red to green or something like that. Uh, you know what I mean? Like if you have something like that, okay, when I submit a new record, app sheets waiting for the Google sheet to finish doing that sort of stuff. And then it does number two. And so if you just have a whole bunch of that, right? It's just like, wait, and it's like this, 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 this. Okay, now the next one, this, 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 this. And you can see that's why it starts taking forever. Uh, so generally speaking, the advice that I give people is like when you're using a Google Sheet or a Smart Sheet or any uh, an Excel file, anytime that you're using like a, a cloud spreadsheet service as your data source and you're going to connect that to an AppSheet app, treat the data source as just a database. Like it's literally just a repository for information. There, there's the ability to do fancy things, but don't do it because of just what I was talking about. You have to wait for AppSheet to finish doing its thing, or AppSheet waits for Google Sheets to finish doing its thing. If you wanna do that, I mean, the, the benefit, right, of being able to connect your AppSheet app to a spreadsheet is that you can continue to use conditional formattings and things, and you can do spreadsheet stuff, and I can, you know, I can process things in the spreadsheet world where a lot of people are really familiar. Okay, so if you wanna keep doing that, what you gotta do is, gotta, what, you, what you can do is create another file, like a whole nother workbook, right? And open a sheet in there and use a query or a data import or something of this nature where you import the data from your main database into this other spreadsheet. 
and then you can do what you want over there. The benefit of this is that all of the data is in its own repository over there. And so like I can create my own clone and then format it the way I want to see it. I can hide certain columns. I can, if I adjust my query, I can rearrange things how I want. I can insert columns at the end for more calculations for my benefit. I can do a whole bunch of stuff, right? And then if Mike, you know, doesn't like it, then Mike can do the same exact thing. He can create his own file and format it how he wants to see it. And it just opens up so many more opportunities when you do it that way. It's just most people aren't comfortable or familiar um, with that sort of data import type of formula into another sheet. Uh, but yeah, that's the general advice is that you should just treat your Google Sheet just like a data repository. Don't do any of the, don't do any conditional formatting. Don't do any data validation. Don't do any, you know, equals, e you know, equals sum, whatever, whatnot. Don't do any of that sort of stuff. No, your spreadsheet is literally just a place for data. I hope that answers that one. Uh, the next one, the next two that I have are from Graham. Uh, he says, I have been using AppSheet for a few years and I currently use Zapier to do a lot of the moving of data between tables. For example, a job applicant becomes an employee, a prospect becomes an account, a contact, an opportunity, right? Makes sense. Recently, I have been seeing more actions in the new bots and would rather do, the, do this kind of work in AppSheet and not involve Zapier at all. My question is, what can AppSheet now do that I used to rely on Zapier to do? Yeah, so basically, uh, like automation is has morphed into almost anything now like anything that you could do on zapier you can very likely find a way to make automation do it now some of those things might be behind a paywall like you have to have an enterprise license in order to access that uh, thing like you can't maybe you can't access uh, some of the api stuff or something of this nature you can send web hooks out if you have the core if you have a core license um so you know if you if you're trying to push data to an API, you can use a, a, you can create a bot that does a, a workflow type uh, I don't know what the word a task where it spits uh, pushes a web hook to uh, you know an API endpoint that's somewhere listening for data or whatever. Um, you can legit trigger scripts now from automation. So if you've got like a Google script that lives, you know, in the cloud somewhere that processes data, however it's supposed to happen, you can trigger that legitimately from AppSheet now. Uh, any of the sort of data modification things like I need to change this from, I need to change an order from open to close, right? Well, that's just an action inside the behavior panel that's modifying the order records order status column from whatever it was it's setting it to closed right or finished or complete or whatever the word is right uh, and I can just trigger that in some way inside of an automation where I could have it <clears throat> triggered off of say I've got the ability to submit a, a, a um, like a, a uh, not, not in the order, but like on the order, I have the ability to check in the stuff. Okay, so once I check in everything, you could build an automation that's looking for that on an open order. Uh, and when that's complete, it tr tr kicks off a whole bunch of stuff. You can make files, you can folderize these files, as in what I mean by that is like, I can make a folder system inside my Google Drive near in the same relative folder of where the data source lives. So again, I'm speaking strictly on Google now. Um, like I've got a Google sheet that powers my app sheet app. That app, that Google sheet lives in a Google drive folder. I can app sheet can folderize things inside that folder using data from your records. So like I could create a folder tree if I'm trying to, for instance, I want to save the PDFs 
once the order is complete and everything's done and we've got like a final everything's done and we've updated the file i want to update the file and store that in the cloud so i can store that like not in just like this invoices or orders dump folder where it's just got a billion things inside it and you got to try and find it hot mess doesn't work what you what i can do is i can say invoice or orders and then like what's the name of the client we'll create a folder for the name of the client what's the name of their project we'll create a name we'll create a, a full a project folder you see what i mean and we'll just keep extracting data from the records that the person has submitted and use that to build folders so that when you go to the google drive and you're looking at it it all makes sense perfect uh you can um let's say, make files you can make like you can make html files which is crazy so <laughs> <laughs> like the yeah the things you can do are amazing there is very little that you can't do inside automation these days it's just understanding how to get there is difficult so perfect thing perfect topic for future videos right what are your automation problems what are you trying to do in automation there you go come on i'll, I'll answer some questions there Last question I got here is uh, from Graham, and he says, I currently use JotForm as a way to get information into my apps, as I don't see any way to, I can get information from someone who is not a user on my system to get information into my app. My question is, how do you get other parties to securely get information into your app, thinking customers and job applicants? Yeah, this is also another very common question, right? So, um, and it, it's really, the, it really comes down to a financial thing, right? Because it's gonna cost me 10 bucks per user, five bucks per user, but I don't, I've got a hundred people that are workers on site. I'm not gonna pay $5 for each of those people. All they're doing is like, I just need them to watch the safety video and sign a thing that says that they watch the safety video. And I don't want to have to do that on a computer or a tablet or like a device that I'm like, I, there's a hundred of these people. They each need to be able to do it on their own device, right? Very common scenario that, I, that um, I've brought. So the solution there, right, is AppSheet, you can use AppSheet to solve this solution, but sometimes AppSheet is not always the best solution. This was something that Praveen pointed out to me a long time ago. Sometimes, um, so we're using Google Sheets as our data source. Google Sheets can use Google Forms. So just make a form for your Google Sheet. There you go. Or here's a fun thing. If you make, if you start and with a Google Form, as in you go to forms.google.com and you make a form and like make the form in the form builder thing that they have, and then turn the thing on where it says, you know, submit these to a Google Sheet. Okay, that Google Sheet that the, the form is connected to, you can add columns to that. And it, those columns aren't reflected inside the form, nor do they mess with the form at all. Fun thing that you can do is I could create the form that I want for data entry from the people that just has the stuff that I need them to fill out, right? Then I can get to the Google Sheet and then I can add into that all the stuff that I need to use. Cause you know, AppSheet's based on structure. So like, I'm gonna need a whole bunch of stuff up here at the front um, for, for like, I like to do all this header type stuff. You know, I'll, maybe I wanna separate things out into pages. Uh, maybe I, I'm gonna add in some more stuff at the end for my own, my own purposes and the processing things that I'm trying to do, right? Okay. You can totally add those in after you've made the Google Sheet from your Google Form, and there you go. Now you take that Google Sheet and connect it to an App Sheet app. There you go. Now you've got a Google Form that only submits the data that's inside the ones that were originally there, populating records inside the sheet. You get to App Sheet, then you can populate all the other columns using App Sheet. Dual purpose done. Done. Um, if you're using Smartsheet, right? Smartsheet has a form thing that they have. It's kind of crap, but I mean, it, it works. Um, if you're just trying to like 
Yes, enter your name, enter your phone number, and did you do this? Yes, there you go. Like, that's all you're trying to get. You can get, you can, they got that. That's a simple thing. You don't need a whole lot for that. Or you could go the app sheet route. Uh, there is the public apps that you can get. You can get a license for a public app. Uh, it's 50 bucks a month for an unlimited number of users, but there's no security involved, as in there's no login mechanism and you can't use the um, uh, user email formula, like the actual formula inside the app builder where you might want to pre-populate the email column with their email. You can't simply, you just can't use the formula. It just doesn't work. It causes a break and errors. Um, but, you know, if you give them a space to enter in all of their stuff, uh, there's a setting you can turn on inside the app that filters out all the previous rows. So basically the table accepts data, but it doesn't show anything. Uh, so you can do that, you create your app sheet app. Uh, you could, depending you know, on how much you wanted, how far you wanted to go, you can, the public apps can make use of automation to like send emails and notifications and things. So, or data changes and stuff like you can do a lot. So if, like if you build that inside of an app sheet app and build it as a public app, there you go. It's just submitting records into your sheet. Happy days. You just uh, you know deploy the public app. You have to have the app. The public app has to be hosted on a separate app sheet account because you can't have two licenses uh, on the same app sheet account. You can't do that. So I mean, you just spin up another Google sheet, uh, another Google account for the app, move it to that app sheet account. There you go distribute the uh, like the web address for that web uh, for that public app to all of your people give it a you know make a QR code from the URL or whatever there you go they don't have to install the actual app because uh, they can you can do all of the you can do the signature thing you can submit photos so okay you can't you can't access if you do if you access an app through the web browser, versus using the actual app sheet app if you use the app sheet app you can use the camera to take a photo versus on the web all you can do is upload something so i can natively take a picture using my camera on my phone and then upload that file using the image column right so there it all works it's just there's little things that are you know a little not as nice but it totally works uh, and it's the easiest way to do it um, yeah, so I hope that answers your questions. Uh, sorry if this was a little long and maybe a little uh, tangent-y and ranty, but you know, uh, we're getting there. Uh, if you have any further questions, uh, feel free to let me know. I will try and do one of these every week if I've got enough questions. Till then, everybody, see you in the community.